Hi there, welcome to the latest news and discussions on the Noah Presgrove case. Today we're looking at a different side to Jasmine Milan to complete that full understanding of key individuals within the case. Whilst previously we've seen Jasmine Milan's point of view, the 3.41am timestamp Snapchat photo taken Monday, September 4th, 2023, to announce that Noah is missing from the party. And whilst it didn't look like she was taking that serious, and furthermore, she added on by saying she didn't know what was going to happen next, whilst it was supposedly deleted, and certain behaviour from others, you know, and what they think was a bit dodgy, suspicious towards Jasmine. Then we transitioned recently to Jasmine Milan and Noah Presgrove, quite intimate, close together, kissing when we saw that video, which was reposted by Renee Milan, the mother, on TikTok, which was a little bit odd to be publicising that and to be sharing it on an intimate moment. That Jade Milan, the sister to Jasmine, recorded it or at least edited it, which is a little bit dodgy again, depending on how you interpret it. Now we're seeing a more sensitive side from Jasmine Milan. Instead of the defensive side or the, well, we didn't know, uh, we love him, but by the way, we deleted this and we, we deleted that. Whilst there's some contradictions there, we're seeing from a sensitive side of Jasmine Milan and context and a backstory to that original tattoo, if you remember what we looked at. Credit to one of the Reddit pages. That's where we looked at it at the start. We kind of round it up now and get a better understanding behind it as for the date, the year of when that tattoo was on her wrist, which was saying Noah. And there have been people in the comment section giving their thoughts and ideas, and it could well link in with today. So that's what we're going to get straight into with, and can even check the comments as well, see if there's any additional replies. And there is also a post as well like a tribute to Noah, so that's kind of interesting. Does it still remain online? I assume so. Is it easy to find? Who knows? But Reddit, we're able to pick it out, and that's what's most important. Before we do go any further, if you do want to catch up on any previous videos, such as last night's Caden Pressey's interview analysis, which turned the tables and everything upside down, or Justin Roy's interesting interview as well, analysis, well, top right corner screen where that eye symbol is, hover over it, click on it, and you will find those videos to catch up on when you do have time and when you've finished watching this video. There'll also be a playlist as well with all the other videos I've done on the case. And feel free, at any point, leave your comments and responses down below under this video in the comment section. You'll also find a pinned comment by me with additional links if you do want to support the channel. Big shout out to everybody that has supported the channel in recent times, such as last night as well. Really positive to see. With that all being said, let's get straight into this finding. Here we are, the title of this post reads, Jasmine Milan's posted tribute to Noah for his birthday when it came about. She also got a tattoo of his name. This was nine hours ago by Cheap Caregiver. Shout out to them. Give us a bit of a caption as well or so. Tributes. The post on the left was posted for Noah's birthday. The post on the right was a post she made in October, a month after his death. It's for informational purposes. The picture on the left is from the night of the party. Carter is to the right of Jasmine and Jack. She is one of the few to post a public tribute to Noah. That's, that's very true. For more tributes, check out the tribute tab of subreddit. Okay, well, we'll get to that another time. We got the photo here. I would like to click on it. There we go. And what does it say? May 14th. Oh, sweet Noah Presgrove. How we all miss you so much. I hope you're having the best 20th birthday as this is your first one in heaven. I hope it's extra special for you. There's not a day that goes by that we don't think of you. I hope you know how much we love you. Uh, I love you and miss you so much. So, does Jasmine Millan miss Noah and love him as a friend or more? I guess this comes across more friendly and it'll make more sense on the next post as well. For Jasmine to say, um, there's not goes a day that we don't think of you, we love you. Who is we? Who is Jasmine referring to collectively, herself and whoever, I wonder. And it's just interesting that, you know, maybe we've seen this photo before. I can't remember if I have, but that photo, as said, 
from the party itself. You see Noah on the left, shirtless as usual. He's got his chain around his neck. Was that the chain that was found on the highway, broken into three pieces? Maybe. And as for the hat, that is supposedly missing. Then, you got Jasmine in the middle. On the right would be Carter Combs from the looks of it. Then to the right of that, I don't know who that person is because they're off screen. But behind Carter Combs is Jack Newton. And Jack Newton has his arms around Carter Combs, which is very normal. Especially since they're, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend at the time, right? They all look happy. No issues, no problems, no troubles at that point. And to think what would happen after. Weird, isn't it? To think that there might be a very small chance that at least one person in that photo may know the truth as to what's happened. Or a very small chance, the possibility that one of them in the photos could have been responsible directly does make you think. And it's hard to comprehend when when you look at them first glance, they just look like normal friends hanging out, having fun, having a good time. And yet, after that, it was far from the truth, wasn't it? Whether that be anger, aggression, sadness, jealousy, frustration, all kinds of emotions, and even driven through alcohol too. Interestingly, Jack Newton in the background is wearing a hat, and it just so happens that his hat was messed with at the party. As to where it ended up, that's unknown. But he did say to his father, when we go to fishing trip, can you bring me a spare hat? I've lost the other one. He didn't say he lost it, someone messed with it, but realistically, it's lost. It's somewhere. But indirectly, or more so in the background, could Jack know where it is, but he can't go and get it because it's got evidence on? But this is my question. Some people said, well, what if Jack's hat had blood on and DNA? Well, if blood is going to end up on Jack's hat, it's going to spray that high. Well, what about low down on the body, right? If you were punching someone, you could get blood on your hand. If you're moving someone, you could get blood on your hand. Um, but you can wash it off. But what if you're wearing a shirt, uh, jeans, shorts? And obviously, Jack was wearing clothing. More clothing than Noah. Maybe. I can't fully remember. But he had different clothing gone. And any form of clothing below the head, likely blood could have got on it. What did Jack do with his other clothing besides the hat? Were all the clothing messed with, which basically means disposed of, cleansed, buried, burnt? See, at the end of the day, it's easier to burn clothes as evidence than a body. To burn a body, really high temperatures are needed. That's why you've got like one of those morgues and, um, you know, those ovens, extreme heat. Most people won't be able to reach that extreme heat you know, in public, general public people with access to limited resources. For most part of it, you saw how it was with the Dylan Rounds case. People were pushing that agenda that Dylan's body was burnt and broken down that way. You had the psychics, the readers with the cards, which they pulled out from the rear end and shoving that agenda as well. Was any of that true? No. In that instance, specifically, no. Um, I'm just being specific and honest, okay? But... In this case, could any evidence, besides it being buried or dumped in a pond or dumped on the side of the highway, could anything have been burnt down? Does the party house, does the property have any burn barrels inside the barn, round the back, on the front? When I looked at that recent footage, which was several weeks ago now, I didn't see any burn barrels what about at the party house, the party footage back in 2023? Did anyone notice any burn barrels? If so, you know, obviously you might not be able to find any remnants from it anymore because it could have been burnt down enough so you couldn't identify it and dumped elsewhere onwards. But, you know, just as a possibility and opportunity for disposing of things. Now, yes, we did go quite deep with this simple photo and post besides what Jasmine Milan says here. But, you know, a photo can tell a lot and it can open up a lot of possibilities, right? But yeah, in terms of what Jasmine Milan says here, it's pretty much a normal tribute, what you would do for a loved one, someone you care about, think about, etc, etc. Anything suspicious here? Not to me on the surface level, but you can always let me know what you think. The most important thing that I've noticed, though, Look at the eye contact. How many of the people are actually looking directly at the camera? Jack Newton is. 
Carter Combs is looking off to the side. Noah Presgrove is kind of looking centre at the screen. And Jasmine Milan once again smiling but completely looking away from the camera. Like, eh, looking away. Not that that's a problem. But her posture, her facial expressions, her lack of eye contact with the camera lens is very consistent with that Snapchat post that this photo likely was taken earlier on. Saturday, Sunday, I'm not too sure because we can't see the colour of Noah's shorts. But in terms of how she looks away from the camera, that's consistent to the Monday morning Snapchat post photo selfie by Jasmine Milan on the front porch at the party house just on the outside saying Noah is missing. So that's consistent there. Consistently pissed, drunk, maybe. Or just that... Sometimes when people take a photo or record themselves with a front-facing camera, they might be looking centre of the screen. It's like with, I don't know if you notice it, but sometimes when I do my videos, I have to look off screen towards the top of my phone on the side because that's where the camera is, the lens. If I was to look middle of the screen, yes, I can see myself and my face, but my eyes aren't looking directly at the camera because the camera isn't in the centre of the screen. But naturally, as a person, you would look centre of the screen, what you're looking at, to see why it's picking up. So that's what could have happened here, maybe. Yeah, possibly, I think. Yeah. Maybe now. There you go. This was October 28th, 2023. This tattoo has so much meaning to me. I have so much love for you forever and always. So that sounds very personal and close. And I think Jasmine Milan has moved on, is in a relationship with somebody else, whoever, whatever, okay? To have that tattoo on you for the rest of your life, likely, and to commit to other people in other relationships down the line shows how strong that bond was between Jasmine Milan and Noah at the time. Whether that be as a long-time friendship, a deep connection, or more than that, such as a relationship. But to be honest, when it does come to relationships, and you've seen people where they get each other's names tattooed on their bodies, when something has gone wrong with time, they've ended up getting them removed or covered up. But that tends to be because they're still alive and they've broken up and it's been negative and they want to move on. They don't want that name printed on them forever, because what's the point of having a person's name on your body if you're no longer with them? And if you used to get with somebody else, that would be kind of awkward. But in terms of a friendship status, such as this tattoo as well, to honour and remember Noah, it's quite a big, bold move to do, and arguably somewhat brave, because in the future, if you ever came across anybody else, such as a relationship encounter, they could question and think, why do you have that guy's name on, on your wrist tattooed? That's a bit weird. And other people could feel uncomfortable about it. But obviously, if there is an understanding behind it all and there is context, then there shouldn't be a problem. As I said, I'm just giving you the full explanation of how human minds can work and how people react. It was important enough to Jasmine to have that specific tattoo on her wrist. And supposedly the text or font was somewhat similar to Noah's handwriting or so, such as on that white t-shirt, kind of making it even more personal. Kind of like when people might have someone sign their arm or body part as an autograph, and then they get that autograph imprinted directly onto them or so. So it remains there forever because it's important to them and it means a lot. And there's a there's a high level of value behind that, whether that be to do with money or more so emotionally, emotional wealth in a way, keeping it close to you. And that will be because it will be on your body forever or as long as you want it to be. And that tattoo, as we said, it looked red around the sides and behind and it, it looked a bit raised and bumpy to skin, which implies it was done fresh at the time of when the photo was taken shortly afterwards. And to say that the tattoo means a lot to me, and there was a lot of meaning behind it, it's not just a simple heart thing saying, oh, that person loves Noah, but there's a bit more to it. And I think there was a few people commenting on my channel that were correct about the date and timing of it, roughly, but more so some people were correct about the bird. I think it was a dove, but it showed it flying away. So it's kind of like leaving, but in peace, at rest. So there's a meaning behind that. And then the hearts represent love or care 
and memories, etc. The text, specifically the font, kind of represents maybe Noah's handwriting on a personal level. So it's a unique tattoo. Is it an amateur one? Maybe, maybe some people could argue that, but with it being unique, you can't really rate or judge or compare it to others out there. Who was it done by? Well, that wasn't explained. But what this what this does is kind of helps provide a different perspective inside to Jasmine Milan. Whilst we can be critical or we can look at the dark side or the suspicious side of Jasmine Milan, we also need to look at the positive side as well. But there might be people sceptical out there that say that this tattoo, the reason why she had it was because of deep guilt for the death of Noah or the outcome of what led to him leaving the party and people turning him down. You never know. Some people are sceptical. That's understandable. Just like how Noah's body was supposedly tampered with. Was sheeting put over, supposedly? Was the body adjusted? Was there a form of crime of passion? Um, a form of sincerity? A form of regret as to what they've done to Noah? I'm not saying that that links with Jasmine Milan, but just the theme in general. Feeling sad. It kicking in reality, thinking, oh, probably shouldn't have done that or let's make it as comfortable for Noah as possible it's the least I can do considering how I've treated him or what I've done to him in terms of Jasmine Milan's case outsiders people in the community as well could put the argument across and say that the tattoo whilst it resembles kind of like a form of respect honoring Noah sharing love and care and memories as well you could argue and say is it a form of guilt because of what you know or what you've done in the past to Noah. I'm not saying that that's what Jasmine Milan has done. I'm just giving you a perspective aside what people out there could think. That is all. So, do we have any other details like the comments? Um, not now. Hmm. So, I don't know why the text looks really big and enlarged, but nevertheless, Trick says, man, who's a beautiful kid in his primary life, all I think of is jealous little boys when I think about this case. Add alcohol to the mix and you have a dead kid with parents covering it up. Unfortunately, I couldn't find that other comment which was in the section, maybe because it hasn't been approved yet, or I don't know, sometimes comments don't always show up. As a little heads up, in regards to my channel, whether it be the videos, the community post, anywhere where you can comment, if not all the comments show up on screen, let's say it said 10 comments and only five were publicly visible, in order to see the others, all of them, click on the filter section and set it to newest comments. It will show them all. Sometimes YouTube, I guess, do it because some of the comments could be negative or have swear words. Even though it doesn't bother me and I'm not going to censor that, YouTube does. So always make sure to look out for the filter option on comments. You can see them all and you should be able to. And if not, then YouTube's definitely messed up and there's a glitch. But to link back to Noah Presgrove, I just wanted to add this in. This was an on-the-spot finding. Credit to Reddit, credit to Cheap Caregiver. Very important to provide the source and the context. Very critical. And that's exactly what's needed within this case when it comes to other situations too. The only exception would be, it's very understandable, like it might be hard at times to try and retrieve it all and even refer back, because the further you go on into a case, the more post, discussions and news that comes out, it becomes so much more cluttered, doesn't it? So, I don't know if it's hard to look back and catch up or not, but I think it's okay at the moment, and this is just another thing ticked off the list. Does this make Jasmine Milan 100, 100% innocent? Not exactly, but it does show her positive, sensitive, you know, good side to her. And it sounds weird wording it like that, but, you know, you can't see everything within a person in one one go. Over time, you can see it all or see most of it, and I've provided this to you to present that balance. Like with Jack Newton, we can look at the suspicious side, the lying side, the contradictory side. Is there a positive side to him? right? And do that with each human out there to get a full picture and idea. Because it's easy to jump on in like a witch hunt, but there is a bit of context lacking. 
If that was cleared up, it could really help in some way, reinforce or debunk certain stuff in the case and people and possible involvement. So hopefully you understood this video. Be sure to catch up my previous ones. Feel free to share and like this video so more people see about this backstory and the context given. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye for now.